show on earth. <laughs> Faith and Victory Church Bible study. Hallelujah. Okay, I thought y'all would enjoy that. Praise the Lord. All right, welcome to Wednesday night midweek Bible study. And we're glad to have you with us. And um, we're going to share the fact that we're online finally. Hallelujah. Like, share. Come on. I'm trying to share it and it doesn't want to share. All right. Hello, share, post, and we're out there. Hallelujah. Good to see everybody tonight. Well, good for y'all to see me tonight. And uh, we're glad you're with us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Um, we are moving into the fall, and school started back for those going to college, and they've already started, and high school starts, and other schools start in a couple of weeks, and maybe 12 days or something like that before they start, before the students show up in classes. and So it's a busy season for everybody, but um, thank God for the opportunity to, to get into the Word. Amen. Father, we thank you for our time together. Thank you for the Holy Spirit the leader and guider in the church, the wisdom and the instructor, great and mighty teacher who will minister to us and to us the revelation of your word to people so that we can walk in the light as you're in the light. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I want to talk tonight about your words. Um, some subject matters we were on a regular basis. We may cover them every six to 12, sometimes we go 18 months uh, to you stuff, but we try, some certain subjects, we try to keep it uh, not far out. It's not a one and done kind of thing. Um, some of these things you need to hear over and over and over and over and over and over again, Frosty Morning. That carries back to singing the Frosty Morning commercial. Yep. Hallelujah. Remember Frosty Morning hot dogs or Frosty Morning bologna or bologna or whatever, whatever you want to call it. And um, I went and looked it up on Facebook, not Facebook, but on uh, YouTube when they found the jingle for Frosty Morning. It's out there. And uh, the little frost guy with his little snow cap on and the black and white commercial singing that song. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's, get, let's jump in here. Um, let's go to James chapter 3. The third chapter of the James. We'll start a second verse. It says, For if any thing, if in many things, if we offend all, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is perfect. Uh, and able to bridle as a perfect man is able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Now, you know, these are old King James words for certain things. Um, so, the, you know, the, uh, the helm would be the rudder, and the governor would be the pilot or the, or, you, know, the you know, the pilot of the ship. So. Okay. Even so, the... Matter, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. How great a matter a little fire kindleth. Or for so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and it setteth on, course, uh, setteth on fire the course of nature and it set on fire of hell. Hallelujah. Words are the seeds that start the process of life, that start the process of uh, kingdoms. And we're talking, you know, we primarily deal with two kingdoms and, you know, on the spiritual things, um, heaven and hell. Sets into functioning in our lives. And James says uh, that even though it tongue's a little member, it, it sets. It defiles, it can defile the whole body. Fire of hell. So, in, in carnality, the, the tongue is set on fire of hell. God. 
governed by something greater than just pure trying not to say the wrong thing. It has to be, it has to be something greater. Okay. Now, there are two things that have to be understood before anyone can be a man or woman of faith and power, which means they speak faith, they speak the word, they speak life. And um, in, order to, in order to be a person that can do those things, there's a couple things you need to have understanding of. And um, the first one is this. No one, and we said this before, and it's not new to you, but if you hadn't heard it, well, I hadn't thought about it, well, it's good to hear it again. No one has a choice of whether or not they live by words. It's, you don't have a choice. We all live by words, okay? Um, but you, you do have the choice of what words you live by, okay? So it's not a matter of do I have a choice. I, I, I choose not to live by words. I choose not to be able have to say what I want or say what I believe or get the consequences of what I say. I choose. You don't get that choice. The choice you get is a choice of which words you live by. In other words, how you govern the, the words of your mouth. <clears throat> the psalmist said, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be wholly acceptable unto thee, O Lord my God. Put a watch over my mouth that I might not sin against thee. Okay? Um, so, every one of us live by words. Whether you like it or not. So, settle that. I live by words. I live by words. You have to settle that. And I can determine what words I live by. Can't determine the fact that you live by words. You know, um, we live by eating. It's just a matter. You have to eat. But you can determine what you eat. Okay? Yeah, you can determine whether or not you're going to be eating, you know, uh, the hijacked $100,000 worth of ramen noodles. Or a you know certified Angus beef uh, cut of ribeye steak at Ruth's Chris coming served on your table on a five hundred degree platter sizzling in their butter. Huh? You can determine what you what you eat. Yeah, doesn't that, that sound good? I mean, the the sound of that sizzle on that platter. Oh yeah. That's, that's one of those every once in a great while occasions for us. We like we enjoy going, but it's just not something we do often. Um, but it's good. Ramen noodles, I, I, I can determine not to eat them. Okay? Yep. I, now, if some of y'all remember eating Vienna sausage or Vienna sausages growing up, thought they were the best thing in the world. Have some mustard put on them and eat them. You know, to get all that gel that was around them all, just strip that off in a paper towel and then eat them. I wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole now. used to eat them all the time, you know. And I remember canned potted meat. Yep. You know, you think spam's bad. Try potted meat. It, I, I'm not sure what it is. It, yeah, they weren't either when they got it put in there. I don't eat that anymore. I really don't. You know, if, you know, if that's what, that's what you're living off of, and maybe that's where you are in life, okay. But I'm telling you, I've, I've, I've gone by there, and I don't want to stay. I don't want to go back there. All right? Um, hallelujah. So the first thing is we all have to live by words, but we can but, but although we have to live by words, we do get to determine what words we live by, okay? Secondly, if you're going to be a man and woman of faith and power and be able to speak life and speak the Word of God and live the Word of God, you have to understand righteousness has come to us. And righteousness speaks. Romans 10, 6 says, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That has been Christ down from above. And who shall descend into the deed to bring him up from the dead? But what saith it? The word is not even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Amen? Righteousness speaks. So you have to understand that you have been made righteous so that the righteousness that you've been made can speak. Okay? Amen? All right. And, we, and because of that, we've been given divine authority to speak God's words in Jesus' name. We understand our position with the Father and that we've been authorized with authority to speak God's word 
it changes our perspectives and it changes how we approach the Word of God and speaking the Word of God. We're not just mimicking, you know, what somebody told us to say, you know, and I believe in confessions and it's great to do confessions at the end of a sermon or a meeting or you're trying to get people to see something. But if you don't have the revelation of that you're righteous and that your words have authority and power, it won't do you a lot of good. Okay? It's good to rehearse those things. It's good to have that kind of in us. But at the same time, we have to understand our position with the Father is that we've been made righteous. So we have an authority to speak God's word and have it come to pass. Amen? Okay. Um, so our words, um, they're the, seeds of, the words are the seeds of the process of life. Understand that we are... That we have to live by words. We can choose what words we live by and that we have been made righteous and therefore have the authority to speak God's word. Okay? And expect with the expectation of getting the results of speaking that word. Okay? Um, we apply our faith. Okay? Let's look at Matthew, Mark chapter 5, we'll starting verse 21. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there came with one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray, come and lay thy hands on her, and that she may live. She be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Now, right in the middle of this, Right in the middle of this, a woman comes up to touch his garment. Remember that? And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things by many physicians, and was, much, was um, and spent all that she had, and it was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Um, when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, you can underline that in your Bible, for she said, or because she said, the words that she had spoken set into action her faith. In other words, it produced faith in her that she acted upon. It wasn't a dormant faith. wasn't a potential faith. wasn't a inert faith. Action came to it. Okay? Because she so spoke and believed what she said. Okay? For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Now, if we said this before, we'll say it again. The Greek tense and structure of for she said really reads out this way, um, better reads out this way in, in, in coming into English. For she said and kept on saying. Okay? For she said and kept on saying. The tense of the, tense of the verb gives it into that continual ongoing um, action. It was an action that was, it was ongoing, not just a one-time event. Okay? Um, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of things in the kingdom of God that are not, that are not one-timers. They're ongoing. Okay? Hallelujah. And uh, for she said, and kept on saying, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body she was healed of that plague. <clears throat> and Jesus, immediately knowing himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And the spiritual guys, the disciples, you know, these guys, these guys want to sit at his right hand, rule the kingdoms, not deny him. I mean, they, they, this, is a, this is a group of uh, misfits is what it really is, that Jesus turned into people who turned the whole world upside down. Hallelujah. And uh, his disciples said unto him, uh, I love King Jimmy, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? Now, that's King Jimmy for... Hey, Jesus, everybody here is touching you. Can't you tell that? All right? I love Jesus. I, I love, you know, Jesus. I love Paul. I love the way they respond to unbelief and stupidity. And the Bible says, and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. He didn't even respond to the disciples. Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, who touched me? Can't you know, King Jesus makes these guys into eloquent uh, public speakers that they weren't. They were raw, hardened, I mean, crusty, um, anything but sophisticated people. 
Right? They just, there was no sophisticated. They would not have been on the cover of GQ at any time. Okay? They might, they might have been on the cover of Croc Hunter. Or um, what, what was the show with all the guys who uh, went down in, the, down in the, uh, Louisiana? They, they would go killing the alligators. Swamp People. They may have made the cover of Swamp People. They weren't sophisticated. Didn't mean they were stupid. Just mean they weren't they weren't sophisticated. King James makes it sound so eloquent. Thou seest a multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, who touch me? They're they're like John. Did he get enough sleep last night? Peter goes, man, I don't know. You know, um, Matthew goes. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to collect some more taxes because this, this, this ministry might be in trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And um, Simon's brother. It was, it was, Simon, was Philip Simon's brother? Peter's brother? Huh? The one that, who was it was under the tree? Which is like, well, I'm going back to the tree, man. We'll figure it out. Which one of the disciples it was. And um, Jesus just ignored him and looked round about to see her that had done this thing. And But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, well, she knew right then she was healed, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now let's stop here for a second. This woman hears of Jesus and starts saying, If I can touch but his clothes, I'll be whole. If I can touch but his clothes, I'll be whole. If I can touch but his well, then she gets up, and she begins to act. Remember this? She has suffered this for 12 years. It was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And it spent everything that she had. She's basically destitute. Not only that, because it was a communicable disease or considered contagious. Um, now, it doesn't mean that it was. They just considered it contagious. She was considered unclean. And so for her to go into public, Nathaniel. The, okay, Nathaniel was under the tree. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's where your brother likes to be too, Nathan. All right. Um, but for her to go in public, she, she was supposed to cry out that she was unclean to, to, to ward people off and to not have them come near her. She didn't do anything because she said and kept on saying, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. And she cut to there, and there's a, there's a press, a throng, a crowd of people all around Jesus, and she's got to work her way in there. Now, mo we, most of us believe that she crawled in, which would probably be the easiest way for her to get to him uh, with, that, with the way that crowd was. And she got in, and plus standing there, walking by people that might recognize her. And you know the Jews, boy, they, they didn't miss a good opportunity to stone somebody. Even if they got caught in the act, the, act, the very act, and let the, let the, the uh, uh, Pharisee go. You ever wonder what happened to the guy? She was taken in the very act, and they didn't have him because he was one of them. It, that was a pharisaical cover-up. They're going to destroy the evidence. There wasn't going to be a tell-all book or an article published in the New York Times or Washington Post. That was going to be funny. Okay. But notice that she said, and kept on saying, if I can touch the clothes, I shall be whole. And when she touched him, Jesus felt virtue go out of him. So if you were to stop right there, what healed her? The power of God. But Jesus, after she hears her story, says, daughter, be of good cheer. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Well, what was it about faith that we can find out? Well, we know from Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24, which we're going to go to soon, that faith speaks. It sets in court, sets in motion things. Amen? And it set in motion for her to get up out of her bed and to go into that crowd and to go in that public place and to take her life into her hands and to go in there and crawl in there and touch Jesus' garment because she was saying it, she was saying it, she was saying it. She was saying what she believed. Amen? And while he yet spake, there came a ruler of the synagogue's house, certain uh, which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble us the master any further? As soon as, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. 
He had to stop them from saying anything. He had to stop them before he undid everything with his mouth. And he suffered no man to follow him, except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and see the tumult. And them that wept and wailed greatly. Yeah, they're just they're professional mourners. Oh, 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 I'm just making all kinds of racket. You know? And um, Jesus says, Why make you? And <clears throat> when he came in, he says, Why do you make this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Now, how do you know they weren't really in, in, in too, uh, upset? And they laughed in the scorn. They went from, oh, and wailing and all this stuff to laughing at him and scorn, mocking him. Kind of like that girlfriend, guy, boyfriend breakup, you know? Oh, I love you. You're wonderful. You're the greatest thing in the world. You break up. I hate him. Can't stand him. Why are you laughing, Gabby? Dating age, see? That's, that's how it works. You know, they're walking around the school one day holding hands. They're all in love. Something happens overnight. They break up, come to school, and, they, and everybody's gathered up in little groups, fighting each other, and they hate each other, and sending messages back and forth about how much they hate each other. Thank God I'm out of high school. <laughs> that's one of the things you just go, I don't want to ever go back. Just, I am glad I'm done with that, that part of life. <coughs> And somebody can say amen. <laughs> amen. All right? All right. But when he put them all out, say, hey, I, and I can't have you people in here. You're so full of unbelief and carnality. You ain't gonna, it's going to mess up the atmosphere. When he put them all out, he took the father and the mother and them that were with him and entered into where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by hand and said unto her, Atalitha kume, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, and she was of 12 years' age. And they were astonished with great astonishment. Hallelujah. But notice the first thing Jesus did was kept their mouth from getting a gear in the negative. I'll tell you, sometimes it's, it's important to get your mouth shut to keep from speaking negative. Sometimes you've got to shut up. Excuse me, I've got, also got the hicc hiccups. Sometimes you just, you know, you're, maybe you're not ready to speak faith, but shut up. Don't speak the unbelief. Because if you do, then you've got to go dig all that up and start over again and get, it all, get all that squared away before you can get back over on the other side. You know? It's like getting upset about something and throwing a glass across the room and breaking against the wall and putting water all over the place. And then you kind of come to yourself, well, I need to do such and such. But you've got to go clean that up first. You got to clean the mess up before you can move forward now. Amen? You know, your car breaks down the side of the road and you get mad with it and take a bat and break out the windows. And then you realize it was out of gas and not broke down. Now you got to fix the fact you got glass all inside the car because you got stupid. Keep the mouth shut. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay. Mark eleven twenty two. Say it. So we've got four steps here we're going to have. Number one is, you say, you speak your faith. Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Jesus answering and saith unto them, have faith in God. Now remember, this comes on the heels of they had gone out, they, they had gone uh, out of town one night. And they, they went out, on, and the uh, next one they got, they come back in. And Jesus seeth the fig tree afar off, having leaves thereupon. And he, ha he came upon it, for half, uh, happily he might find figs thereon. In other words, the leaves were on it, it was supposed to have figs. And he got there, there was no figs on it. So he said, no man, eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. Why did, why did the Bible put that in there? I hear a lot of people talk about silent prayer. God did not inspire writers to write things by mistake. No man, eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. Why? He's reiterating the point. This, this is a lead up to, to the narrative of what Jesus is about to say in Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, and 25, 26. The disciples heard him speak to that fig tree. They go in town, they come back out, and the Bible says, and on the, mor on the morrow as they pass by, Peter, seeing the fig tree with, uh, dried up from the roots, uh, 
uh, said, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curses is, is withered away. And this is where we pick up right here in Mark, uh, in verse 22. And Jesus answered, or Jesus responded to what Peter said uh, unto them and said, have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. You can kind of literally translate it as the God kind of faith, have the faith of God, the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, thank you, Joe. Joe was on, carry, whosoever, Surely meaneth me. That means you raise your hand when we say whosoever. We used to do that sometimes and have him do it 30 or 40 times in a service because when you get the point across, you're the whosoever he's talking about. Okay? Shall I say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Now what did he say? Shall I say? He just got through with the Spirit of God anointing John to write, a Mark to write, that Jesus said unto the fig tree, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever, and the disciples heard it. As it come out by later, and it's dried up, Peter says, Master, the fig tree you curse is withered away. And Jesus said unto them, have faith in God. He's saying that the example of me speaking to that tree and it obeying is a demonstration of faith. So you, number one, you say it. And um, so be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire. When ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Again, the Greek word for prayer is ateo, A-I-T-E-O. Um, that's, and that's English transliteration of the, script, of the, of the uh, Greek letters. Okay. <clears throat> so, but we would spell it A-I-T-E-O with our letters, okay, Arabic letters, or Aramaic Arabic. Um, means to pray or to ask. You use over in James 4, he, you have not because you ask not, A-I-T-E-O, same word, okay? So it's talking about speaking, it's talking about asking, it's talking about saying something. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, when you ask, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Amen? And he goes on to talk about forgiveness, but that's not part of really what we're talking about right now, so we'll just move on. Um, Romans 10, 8. But what saith it? The word is now thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is what? The word of faith in which we preach. Where is it? In the mouth and in the heart. We have to speak faith words to get faith results. So I say Amen. Okay? Secondly, after you say it, you got to do it. James 1.22 uh, says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. James 2.17 says, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. And James 2.26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Okay? So here we have faith or words spoken without actions that correspond to what you believe don't produce. Somebody say hallelujah. <clears throat> Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. Act on the word. Act on it. Speak it. Walk as if it actually so, because it is, but that you believe it's so. Amen? Hallelujah. So, you, number one, you say it. Number two, you do it. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She said, kept on saying, but it doesn't say it, you know, and she put action to it. The Bible tells us she came in the press behind him. Four, she said and kept on saying. The reason she came in the press behind him is because she said and kept on saying. She was saying it, but then she did something with it. She did something about it. Amen? Uh, the third thing is you receive it. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You have to receive the eternity over the natural or the temporal. Um, the word temporal, I remember Jerry, I heard Jerry Savelle say this, Oh, dear Lord, um, 30, 
37, 38 years ago in a meeting. He was preaching on, on this, preaching on this verse and said the word temporal means subject to change. Okay? And um, the things which are seen are subject to change. Cancer is subject to change. Tuberculosis is subject to change. Poverty is subject to change. Destruction is subject to change. That's temporal. It's subject to change. But the things that you're not seeing are eternal. We speak eternity over that which is changeable. You override. We can override what's, what's in action and in place in this world order with faith. Speaking and acting. So we receive the answer. The Bible, Bible says she, knowing me, she, uh, she was healed in her body. She received that. When she acted on it, she received it. Amen? And then, number four, you got to tell it. These are the things she did. She said it. She acted on it. She received it. And then she told it. Remember? She, in fear and trembling, came down and told them all the truth. Amen? And then Romans 12, 11 says this. And by, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and, and I grew up Pentecostal. I grew up classical Pentecostal. We plead the blood. We speak the blood. Talk about the blood. Shout the blood. Sing about the blood. And that's part of it. And that's a powerful part of it. That's, so I'm not negating the, the power of the blood. But they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. It wasn't an either or. It was both. It was the power that's in the blood and the word of their testimony. It was the power provided to them through the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ, the power of the blood that was uh, instituted into the covenant of God with us and the word of our testimony. Amen? And they love not their lives unto death. So we have those four things. She said it. She did it. She got up off that bed and came to the press and touched his garment. Three, she received it. Immediately knowing herself. This birth, uh, uh, Jesus about says um, she felt in her body she was healed of that plague. Touched his clothes and she felt in her body and immediately felt in her body she was healed of that plague. And then when he turned about to you who had done this thing, she came down before him and told him all the truth. You have to testify. Guy goes, I want to testify. Or be like Don Francisco, got to tell somebody. Got to tell somebody. Got to tell somebody. Got to tell somebody. <laughs> he builds and builds and builds. Okay, anyway. I like Don Francisco's stuff from back then. You know, that, um, he came to our church at Green one time. He said, there weren't many people there. He said, well, that's what happens when you come eight years after your big hit. <laughs> Brother, you know. I got to see him. I got to see him twice. Uh, one time in Tulsa, they were, had first moved to Tulsa, and he, they, he was doing a, a little concert somewhere. Uh, not, I mean, there were probably two hundred people in the building. That was it. And, uh, and then our church in Greenville, and uh, which and the pastor was out of town, so I got to spend some time with him. It's a really neat guy. Hallelujah. And um, so, what do we do? We um, apply our faith. Okay. So we apply our faith by saying, doing. Receiving and telling. Amen? All right. Then we recognize in all of this that Jesus is the high priest of our confession. Jesus is the high priest of our confession. The word priest means one authorized to administer in Egypt. The priests of the Old Testament were authorized to administer the sacrifices um, for forgiveness restitution, all the different things. They were an agent of God to work in that place. The administrator is to have charge as a chief agent to execute or to carry into effect, uh, to manage, conduct, furnish, supply, dispense, distribute, direct, control, execute, and superintend, and to furnish help or be of a service. Jesus is our high priest. He's all those things to us. Amen? <clears throat> now, Jesus is the priest of our seeds, not our needs. You have needs. He's not your high priest of your needs. He's the high priest of your seeds that you sow to overcome your needs. Amen? He meets our needs with our words of faith, not our goods. Isn't that wonderful? God's ability to deliver you, to bring you out, to meet your need is not based on what you possess as far as materiality or, um, I mean, you know, your bank account, your job. It's based on the seeds you sow. Amen. And material things oftentimes is your financial sowing. Um, but it's always 
whether it's financial or not, it's always the seed of your words of faith. That's always involved. Amen? Tithing and not speaking faith over it is not really tithing. It's not like, see, putting the money in is only part of it. If you go back and look um, in the Old Testament, I believe, I don't know where it is right off the top of my head. But when they brought the tithe in, they were supposed to stand up after the tithe was brought and say, now, Lord, now hear, O Lord, and begin to pray a prayer about their tithe before the Lord. And I don't have that, I'm not, I don't have that in here in these notes, so um, I have it somewhere in a different set of notes when I'm talking about tithing and stuff. They, they, would, they were all to gather up, and as, as the tithe was brought in, they were all supposed to stand up and begin to speak. Now, Lord, we, we brought the tithe in, and, you know, do this, and do that, you know. Um, what were they doing? See, the seed of the finances was, was partially done when they put the money in, or the finances in, or the, you know, the monetary value in, but it wasn't complete because they hadn't spoken. And until they spoke, released the faith with the words, it wasn't complete. Amen. So that's why you just don't throw your money. If it, we're praying, you need to, you know, you can join up and pray with us, agree with us yourself. Your words need to be involved in your giving. Amen. Amen. And they're on the way to church. Before you get get here at the church, you can you can get in faith. Okay. Now um, let's look. Um, goods are the results. Of faith. Remember the prophet when he came to a woman and she said, I, you know, he said, feed me. She said, I don't have a, enough meal to make one bread uh, or two cakes for me and my son. We're going to eat it then we're going to die. He said, make me one first. Okay? He didn't say, cook me a cake or we'll die. He said, just cook me one first. Act in faith. Amen? Trust in your in sowing. Amen? And she... They lived the whole year off that supernaturally replenished oil and flour. When every morning there it was, there was enough. There was enough to eat another meal. 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 There was enough to eat another meal for a year. It just kept supernaturally reproducing. Hallelujah. And he didn't tell her, cook this or we're, gonna, we're all going to die. Because, of, you know, he who gives a cup of water to, in the name of prophets is worthy of the prophet's reward. Taking care, taking care of the anointed, those who were anointed, was, a, was an Old Testament principle well before it was a New Testament principle. Amen? Okay. How can our words change things, especially when it comes to our body, circumstances, even our lifestyles? Um, let's, let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 5. And if you have a King James Bible, there's probably the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the, to the church at Ephesus. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sounds good, doesn't it? All right. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 3. Or back up, really. Um, and verse 1, and you, and you, happy quicken, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation. Now, conversation is, a, is an Elizabethan era word that meant manner or it meant manner of life, not in the physical bios, but it meant your lifestyle, okay, how you lived, okay. Uh, I like to say King Jimmy, all right? Um, we all had our manner, manner of life or lifestyle in times in the past, in what? In the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the, the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, okay? So we have here that in time past, we walked according to the course of this world, right? But then Jesus comes and says in Mark 11, 23, that if you'll say to this mountain, be removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but believe the things that you say as shall come to pass, you'll have whatsoever you saith. Now he's talking about change. Because now you're not talking about living according to the course of this world, under the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Where you, what you say and what you do and how you act is based on 
uh, being under the, the, uh, the uh, walking according to the course of this world. We don't want to walk according to the course of this world, do we? I don't want to walk according to the course of this world. Maybe you do, but I don't. All right? Hallelujah. Who wants to walk according to the course of this world? All right? So um, that word course means age, according to the age of this world, according to this, the, you know, the, the spirit that's in work in the earth. Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, uh, that you may prove that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. 1 Peter 3 says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subject to your own husbands, that if any obey not in the word, they also may, uh, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, lifestyle of the wives. While we behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. And um, Psalm 103, verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Notice, I like Psalm 103 because David's saying, talking to himself, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now, that kind of gets kind of dressy. He's saying, stop thinking what you're thinking and bless the Lord and do not forget his benefits. Speak. What did God tell them in the Old Covenant? That you'll speak of them when you lie down and when you rise up. Amen? Teach them to your children. And you're, you know, you're supposed to speak these words, and they would, they would rehearse them and memorize them so they could speak them all the time, all over the place, because it was important to speak that. Okay? So the Bible teaches us to speak the right things. Secondly, it teaches us to put the word first, to seek the kingdom. I think one of the more difficult things for believers to do is to shut aspects of life down and let the word have preeminence because it is spiritual and the other things are carnal. And your flesh wants to be carnal. Your flesh is carnal. I'm not going to t really tell you you should do this. If you don't believe me, just tell your flesh it can do whatever it wants to tonight, and it'll go do something it shouldn't do. But don't do that. That's not a good, that's not a good uh, experiment. Because you know it will. Right? Matthew 6, 24 says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, you can't serve God and serve the course of this world. You can't be spiritual and walk carnally. Okay? Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, neither yet your body, what you shall put on. <clears throat> Is not the uh, life more than the meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, neither gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Now, Jesus is laying out the care of the Father for you, which is an undergirding factor and an undergirding thought in um, the, the position of being able to trust God because you know he cares for you and has your best interest at heart. Amen? Which of you, by taking thought, could add one cubit to a stature? <laughs> not my wife. She tried. Anyway, why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow and how they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, now here's Jesus. He's talking about, man, the grass of the field looked better than Solomon. He was, he was just the wisest, had all this stuff. And yet Jesus said he wasn't arrayed like the fields, the beauty of the fields, the, grass, the flowers that bloom in the fields. If God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, if he's going to take the time to uh, give ornate beauty to the grass of the field, which is going to be chopped up and put and baked tomorrow, how much more shall he, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, saying, this he said, what not to say? What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see what? All the carnal, all the carnal people seek after these things. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But, 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Isn't that right? So, and we'll stop here because you know we're we're not going to finish. Um, uh, maybe let me see. Let me see if I can. Mm. Nah. <laughs> no way. Okay. No way. We'll stop right here. Um, next week we'll talk about deciding to live by love and forgive and do what's right. Okay. Praise the Lord. Um, but Jesus had laid down the the narrative that if God loves us so much, why is he saying that? What's he talking about that for? So that you can live however you want to? No. So that you can have an understanding that God loves you so much, he'll take care of you. He's willing to, you can, you can exercise your faith because of his care and his love and his, the goodness of God. Amen. You can exercise that with a, a assured knowledge that he won't hurt you. Amen. He's going to do good for you. Amen. We tell people to trust God when they get cancer, say, God, I had a reason you got cancer. No, he didn't. God hates sickness and disease as much as he hates sin. They're perversions of his, of his creation. Hallelujah. We need to pray over a couple of prayer calls here. So if you'll just join with us, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the anointing on this ministry and this, the calling here to be able to minister to people through laying on of hands. And so we lay hands on these claws in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Father God. Hallelujah. That the anointing of God is transferred and brought into these claws in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when placed on the body of the infirm and those that are sick, we thank it driven out of their bodies of sickness, disease, and every evil thing by the power of God and the anointing of God is released into them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're so glad you joined us tonight. As we're going to give now, so if you want to give, you can do so. That I guess that online giving is on the screen now. Hallelujah. Jesse, she loves that. She, she's sitting back there relaxed. Hallelujah. I guess you've got to be on a bigger screen to see it there, better, though. Uh, the, the little, um, yeah, there it is. PayPal, uh, Square Cash, it's all out there. You can just, all right, praise, that's cool. Amen. She just goes and touches the slide, puts it out there, and she didn't have to mess with it week after week after week. Feverishly typing. You know, the thing is, it should be no problem for Jesse. If you've ever gotten texted by her, you would understand what I'm talking about. She learned the text back on the 150 character limitation days. She still does it that way. So, you know, the text comes in, you're trying to answer it, and then it goes, and you're still trying to answer it. And you're like, Jesse, stop! You don't know how many times we're fussing at you from the other end. Stop it! I'm trying to answer the first one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like, come up for air. Do what? Yes. What's that cap? <laughs> you, just, you just got you just got you just got called out on strikes. Ah. Ah. I did some umpiring after when I was a um, <coughs> when I got um, done with Babe Ruth ball. I did some umpiring a little bit, and, we, and, and they used to. Oh, you, bye. See you guys next time. Hallelujah. They used to. Um,